All right, guys, welcome back. So I want to talk through a particular trade setup on the dollar yen, which is potentially once in a lifetime trade setup. And I'll explain why in just a moment, because if we just go over to the chart here, you can see that we are extremely bullish on this pair, right? Extremely bullish. And we have been for the longest time. And on the way up here, uh, I've caught many of these moves. I've been able to capture many of these moves, not all of them, but a good few, uh, a good few of them, which is basically last week really knocked this pair up onto one of my better performing pairs of the year. So I've been able to capture these trends and I've been able to capture some of these moves and that's been great. What I want to share with you today is a potential shorting opportunity. And everyone at this stage, particularly on the YouTube and all the rest of it, will be going, How, why would you be looking to short and all the rest of it? Well, this is why. Because as a trader, you need to be able to understand what the market's doing, what condition the market's in, what phase the market's in. And then you have to understand... Uh, you know some technical some technical use some technical analysis to identify where that trend might end and uh, I want to explain to you my thought process behind this as well because I've been waiting for this setup for quite a while and if you go and watch some of the other videos that I did I've been tracking this as we go and I said look not only if we get to this level, will I look for a short? It also means that because these levels act like magnets, we're likely to push up to that zone as well. And this is where we are today. So we are approaching the 140 level. We're at 138.90. Uh, we're 100 pips away or so from 140 flat. But look, let's just first of all go out to the monthly time frame. <clears throat> now, if we look at the monthly time frame, you can see that we are the highest we've been since... July 1998. Now that is like 24 years ago today. And that was a time July 98 was when I left school. I remember doing my GCSEs, failing miserably, left school. And uh, I remember exactly what I was doing. I was going into college to become an electrician and all the rest of it, right? That's what I was doing 20 years ago. This price has not been there since 1998 right now if we look back we we um let's look at what what happened historically here so as we broke and closed above this high we just continue going up and where we're going where we're likely to go next is up here to retest these highs now the, the highest high okay is right up here and of course this would be the the ultimate right this would be the ultimate high probability zone for a short however if we just look at this carefully um, and read the actual price patterns, the, the candlestick patterns rather, you can see as we approached this before, we held this level here at 138.80. We then had this big doji candle, which was a big indecision. And there's a lot to be learned from the candlestick formation following the close of this. Bear in mind, this is the monthly candle, okay? Monthly chart. So each of these candles represents a month. And in the month following this hold, we pushed all the way up, we pushed all the way down, and then we closed smack bam in the middle. There was indecision. That whole tug of war was held at that 138.80 level. Following that, we open up, we close, but we don't break and close above the previous high. And then we open up and we close straight back down at that 138 level. And then we open up at the 138 level. We can't push above it and then we continue down. So we haven't been at that 138. So 138.80 is the lower level of that of that band, of that structure zone that I would look for a short because otherwise, um, you all know from my previous uh, comments and analysis on this pair, you have to be quite aggressive with this pair. You have to build more of aggressional, uh, aggressional? You have to build more aggression into your system if you're to catch some of these moves, otherwise you just miss them. So the last thing I want to do is, without going into FOMO, you know, it's not FOMO, but the last thing I want to do is wait for this level and then miss the whole move because we reversed here instead. Does that make sense? So great, we've identified a level at which I'm interested in shorting the market. So even though we're bullish, there is a high probability that we are likely to see a rollover here. So the next question becomes, how do we get involved? So now we've identified the, the phase, right? We're, we're bullish. We've had this big run up into a major resistance level. The next question is, 
how can we look at price and price patterns to identify um, the fact that we could see a rollover to kind of play into our case for the entry? The first thing we can look at is look at RSI. RSI is up at 95. Now, the RSI is a <clears throat> is an indicator that, that basically tracks the speed of transactions. It's a volume indicator. And conventionally, overbought is considered overbought at 70. Now, we're at 95. I have my limits at 80 because I like to use it for that extreme filter. So I, I consider 80 as an extreme overbought condition. But we're at 95 right now. Okay, and this is the monthly time frame. So what I want to do is now do some top down analysis using my trading time frames to see what price is doing um, in order to see if we can get that confirmation of price that we're likely to roll over. Now following this um, breakout wedge compression channel, whatever you want to call it, uh, we're just continuing up. This is the daily time frame. But if you do uh, if you look at this, what you can start to see is some divergence. So we've got some divergence on the RSI here, meaning bearish divergence, meaning that um, bearish divergence on the RSI, higher highs on price, lower highs on RSI. We've also got divergence on the MACD as well, on the daily. So that's great. That's a nice indicator. Let's drop down to the trading time frame. And what I'm going to be looking for here is some deceleration. So what I mean by deceleration is at the moment we're rallying, right? We are very we've still got strong bullish momentum. We may even push up to 140 straight away, at which point I'll be much more aggressive with my entries. But right now, because we're at the bottom of that zone, I'm looking for deceleration, meaning I'm looking for smaller and smaller bullish candles, right? Or green candles in this case. Um, and if I can get that, then I can you know, use that as added confirmation that we're likely to reverse. Then I can look at other things like structure. We know we've got structure. I can look at um, trend lines. I can look at angular trend lines. I can look at um, candlestick formations. We might have a high test candle wick here. We might have a doji here. Um, we might even put in some tweezer top candles here. RSI is still overbought, right? So although you have to be aggressive on this, what I don't want to do is just short this on this candle here. What I want to do is wait for, if this finishes here and it's a bullish candle, the minimum I want to look for is the next candle to be a bearish one and have some tweezer top candles. If we get tweezer top candles, then I can enter, you know, next bar market and short the thing and place my stop above the high. If we don't have such a, you know, if, if we if we start to hover around and start to decelerate here, you could look for a lower, low, lower closed candle, or you could look for a double top. And for a double top, you could go down to the hourly or the 15 minute time frame and start looking at confirmation that price is starting to decelerate and we're running out of steam and we're likely to see a rollover. But right now, look, we're just rallying. There's no stopping the thing. So I wanted to bring this to your attention because this is a really, really nice opportunity. Although there's no actual entry criteria right now, I wanted to share with you my thought process because you know I am looking to short this and I don't like putting out hindsight videos and all the rest of it where this is a trade I took and look, I was right again. I just want to share the thought process that goes into this and the, the power of patience, 24 years of patience in this particular trade to then potentially make a lot of money. Because if we do roll over at 138.80 or even 140, this thing's likely to roll over forever <laughs> for the rest of my, uh, you know, till my retirement. <laughs> so that is a great setup. So we'll keep an eye on this. I will keep you updated and I'll do another pattern uh, i'll do another pattern update or you know price pattern update uh, on my youtube channel again if if and when but i wanted to share that with you guys and i'd be interested to know what you're looking at on this pair as well so share with us uh, in the comments what you're looking at and um yeah i'll keep you updated